Welcome everyone, my name's Robbie. This is Robbie in Manila. Now today we're gonna to be analyzing my free Robinhood stock. So if you haven't opened up a Robinhood account yet, you actually get a free stock when you sign up. And I signed up about a month ago and it's time that I figure out if this stock is something I should hold or if I should sell. So if you haven't opened up a Robinhood account yet and you want to, there's actually a link in the description below that will help support my channel because it's an affiliate link and you'll get a free stock when you sign up. So you're gonna see the whole process that I use when it comes to analyzing stocks. Now, the thing is, I have my own process and you probably have your own process. And if you don't, I highly suggest that you find something that works for you. Now, I tend to gravitate towards value investing and you might not be into value investing. You may care about a different type of investing. Maybe you're actually more of a trader and you like technical analysis. Maybe you're okay with fundamental analysis, but you don't like value investing. Maybe you're more of a growth investor. Maybe you're just into dividend stocks. Whatever it is, create your own process. Okay, let's hop into the computer, see if this is a stock that I should actually sell, if I should hold it, or maybe even buy more of it. Okay, got the Robinhood app open, and let's take a look at the free stock that I got. Now, it's called Coty, C-O-T-Y, and as you can see, it's trading for $4.14. Uh, you can take a look at the charts if you want. One day, let's go out to the one year, take a look. It's down over the year, down over the five years. Now, I don't really look at charts that much because I'm not really into technical analysis. I care more about the fundamentals, fundamentals first, uh, so first I'll kind of like try to figure out the numbers and then maybe I'll look at the chart afterwards But um, I don't really care that much about the chart You know if you want to look at the candlestick you can but again, I'm not trying to trade this. I'm not doing technical analysis I'm gonna do fundamental analysis. So let's go down. I have one share of this. Okay, there's a car alarm going off. Sorry about that. So Let's go down. Let's take a look at the stats now the stats they don't really tell you that much in the Robinhood app, but there are some things that we can kind of gather from this. So we have the open, the high, the low, the 52 week high, the 52 week low. Okay, fine, it tells you a bit about where it's trading in, what its range is. Again, do I care that much about that? No, what I'm gonna be doing is kind of going to filter out the range that it's trading in anyway. So I don't really care about that. Um, I do care about volume. I wanna make sure that a stock has enough volume so 4.15 million is enough volume, so that's fine. Uh, the average volume is 9.65 million, totally fine. The market cap is 3.14 billion. It's a pretty decent size company. Um, maybe a mid cap, uh, actually smallish cap, not micro cap, but maybe like a small cap stock. And then we have the dividend yield is 11.90. So I mean, for people who are into dividend investing, this could be a, a great stock. So. Go down to the analyst ratings. There's a 20% of analysts think it's a buy, 73% think it's a hold, 7% think it's a sell. And we can take a look at what the bulls and the bears say. The bulls say Cody is a major player in the fast growing beauty industry and is the market leader in fragrance, one of the four major beauty categories representing 15% of the total beauty market. Okay, so now we know that Cody is actually in the kind of uh, beauty and fragrance market. The bears say, COVID-19 should cause material disruption to Cody's business, making it more challenging to turn around the struggling consumer beauty segment. Okay, so two different opposing views, both from Morningstar. Now the thing is, uh, right now with what's going on in the world, this is a really, really tough category or sector or industry to be investing in. Um, so right off the bat, don't really like investing in this company sector wise, let's say. Okay, so we're gonna take a look here at the earnings. Now, this is actually something I like about Robinhood. It shows you visually um, the earnings reports and it tells you, uh, does a pretty good job of telling you if it beat expectations or not. So uh, we can just look at the most recent quarter, Q3 2020. Uh, it did not beat earnings, expectations. Meaning, so if that red dot is below, that means that it did not beat it. Um, also, it looks like the earnings were negative, so it did not make a profit. So don't like that. Um, so now, let's just read a bit about Cody real quick. Cody Inc. 
engages in the manufacture, market, sale, and distribution of branded beauty products. It operates through the following segments, consumer beauty, luxury, and professional beauty. Uh, the consumer beauty segment offers color, cosmetics, retail hair coloring, styling products, body care, mass fragrances. The luxury segment comprises of prestige fragrances, premium skincare, and premium cosmetics. The professional beauty segment consists hair and nail care products for salon professionals. And the company was founded in um, back in 1904. Very old company. It's been around a while. It's headquartered in New York. So, you know. It's not like um, some type of penny stock that's trading that's got a small market cap that might be like a pump and dump scheme. This could be a decent uh, stock. So um, the thing is with Robinhood, the way I invest, uh, maybe not the way you invest, but the way I invest, I don't get anything from this. I get that, okay, it checks the marks that I need. It tells me that, uh, number one, that the company trades enough volume. So I don't want to get stuck in a, a stock that has very little trading volume. Um, it's got a market cap that's okay for me. And there's a dividend, that's fine. Although I'm not specifically a dividend investor, but they're always good, of course, if you get a dividend. Um, and then it tells me about the analyst ratings. Okay, so those things are kind of important. Uh, what I like to do is I like to really do some more research and get more into this than what I'm seeing here. So let's go ahead and let's hop into the computer. All right, the first thing I like to look at is something called the Piotrowski F-score. Now I'm gonna go through what it is, why I like it, and um, you know, like I said, everyone has their own methodology and their own way of finding stocks. No one is better than the other, so I would just suggest that you figure out what you like to do. So this is what works for me. Now, I'm gonna tell you why I like Piotrowski. So we're on quantinvesting.com. This is a back test that was done by quantinvesting.com. And just check out the headline, use the Piotrowski F-score to increase your returns by 210.6%. Hey, that gets my attention. So if I go down, and I wanna see, uh, I'll show you where the, the time periods for this back test were. Um, so the time periods for the back test were, it's a 12 year back test, not very long, but a, a lot happened in those 12 years. So it started June 13th uh, of 1999 to June 13th of 2011. Think about what happened during that time period. So you had the tech bubble, 1999. You had two recessions, 2011, 2008. Uh, notably the Great Recession, so I mean really bad time for stocks, uh, two bear markets, so 2007, 2009, and then 2001, 2003. So not a great time to be investing in stocks during that 12 year period. How did Piotrowski F-score work? So let's take a look here. This is showing us the total returns of different um, capitalizations of stocks. So small, small cap stocks being less than 15 million and between 15 and 100 million, mid cap being between 100 million and a billion, and then large cap being more than a billion. So these are the, how they defined these stocks. So the first quartile, meaning the best performing stocks using F-score, meaning they had the best F-score. So everything in Q1 had the best F-scores. So an F-score is a ranking between one and nine a nine is the best. So the Q1 is probably showing F scores of both eight and nine. And I'll go over the F score in a second. So 205% for these higher ranking F score stocks, 301% return for a mid cap uh, universe of stocks, and then 144% for the larger cap universe of stocks. So, okay, that's great. Between that 12 year period, you had Okay, sorry everyone, actually my microphone cut out, so I had to um, put some new batteries in it. We're back. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, what I was talking about before was, over the past 12 year period, if you had used the Piotrowski F-score, you would have had between a 144% and a 301% return over that whole time period, that 12 years. So. Uh, the question is, how is that? Is that comparatively a, a good return? So if we go over here and we look, we can see that the market did return much lower than that. And it returned 
excuse me, it returned 30.5% over that 12 year period. Now, uh, that equals a 2.25% annual rate of return. Okay, so if we look using Piotrowski F score, just sorting by F score, the highest F scores, investing in those, small, mid, and large cap, it crushed the market. So no matter which way you slice it, it was a great way to invest. So using F score, I mean, just this for me gives me some confidence in that. Now there's a ton of other research that has been done and F score works pretty amazing. So F score is great. Now real quick to understand what F score is, let's just look at Investopedia so I can just give you a very quick overview. Um, so basically it's an accounting professor from University of Chicago, which is a great school when it comes to things like investing. And um, so this guy was a value investor. He was into uh, value stock investing. And over years, he kind of decided, and he was an accountant, by the way. And over years, he figured out like this, he created this score. And the score is zero to nine, nine being the best. So you get a point for certain things. There's three categories. So look down here, where are the categories? Uh, Categories are, oops, I skipped it. Categories, profitability criteria, leverage liquidity and source of funds criteria, and operating efficiency criteria. Now, what's interesting about F-score is, you know, you'll usually look and see, for example, like the current ratio, uh, net or current assets for minus current liabilities. So does it have enough money to fund operations in the short term? Things like that. Well, current ratio takes this into consideration. So it's part of the, um, it's part of the uh, formula, or it's a formula, it's part of adding it up, right? So a good Piotrowski score, a company might have good return on assets, operating cash flow, all these different things that you wanna see positive in a company. And you can always look and see if it maybe has a seven or a six. You can look up what criteria it did not be, um, it was not able to um, make past the hurdle. And if it's important to you, then maybe you don't invest in it, even if it has a good Piotrowski F-score. Okay, so there we go. That's the F-score, um, understanding it. Let's go quickly over to Guru Focus. Now, I'm not gonna use any paid for software that you need to like um, have a subscription to to like get through. This is also, you can kind of do it on your own if you want. However, if you want to open up Guru Focus, uh, there's a premium account available. And if you want that, you can use my link. I'll put it in the description below. Um, but anyway, it's an affiliate link if you want to open up a uh, premium Guru Focus account. Okay, what's the F score for Cody? Now, usually there's a little thing here. Uh, it's not there. So let's go down. Usually on the bottom right, there's an F score. So here. Piotrowski F-score details, it's a four. Not good, not what I'm looking for. So honestly, off the bat, this probably is not a stock that I am going to be very excited about. Now, it checked off the box of a positive CFROA. CFROA is more than ROA. There's higher gross margins year over year and then higher asset turnover year over year. Those are the positives It got a point for each of those. So. Um, I would prefer it to have a higher F score, basically. Now, other things that I usually look at might be like return on invested capital. So I usually want to see that around uh, 10, at least minimum of 10. Uh, 20 to 40 is great. Too high can be bad because it can attract competition. Um, so that could be like a problem, but even a growing return on invested capital might even be better than a, a really high invested capital. So if it's growing into, um, if it's 10, then it's 15, then it's 20, that's a good thing. That's almost better sometimes than just having like a 25 uh, ROIC over like a three year period. So the next thing I kind of like to look at is on something called oldschoolvalue.com. It's a great website. It's got an amazing blog if you wanna learn anything about investing, highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's really geared towards value investing, but I mean, you're gonna learn a lot from reading this blog. So the action score, you wanna have at least uh, a B or an A. That's kind of like the sweet spot. This has a D, 
so not something that's great. By the way, you can uh, get a membership to Old School Value. You can see a lot more information, but this is just the free part of it. So anyway, I wanna see this being an A or B, it's not. And action score weights things like, um, there's the growth score, value score, and there's a quality score. It ranks them, all three of them together, and it creates like a, a basic end score. And there's a ton of back testing and research they've done, which you can read all about. But um, you know, it's a, it's a good tool in my opinion. Again, it's not clicking the boxes, so not good. Uh, finally, the thing I will do last is um, after a, if it's a good app score, if I like the return on invested capital, if I take a look at the financial statements and I think it looks okay, um, then I'll do a DCF, discounted cash flow, which you can do on Guru Focus for free. So here's the DCF. So if you go to the DCF, uh, I'll just kind of show you what I'm doing here. So basically, um, I. I don't use earnings per share without net operating income. I use free cash flow. Uh, I put 2.28 here. Uh, the reason I did that is because it's kind of the median of the past three years of free cash flow. Um, I used a discount rate of 13. I have a growth stage of 10 years at a growth rate of 8%, and then a terminal rate at 10 years of 4%. Um, and so basically this all is a, it's a discounted cash flow and the idea here is that it pops out a fair value for a stock, how much you should pay for the stock. Now, the stock is coming in at 336, um, given what I put in here. And it's trading at 411. So it should be, it's basically overvalued. And here you want a margin of safety and you want this to be green and you want it to be, uh, at least I want it to be 25%. That's my sweet spot for margin of safety. Also, a lot of big investors, Benjamin Graham used that. Uh, I think Warren Buffett generally uses a margin of safety of 25%. So anyway, this should be green. It should say 25% minimum. For me, it doesn't. By the way, you see that thumbs down button? It should be a thumbs up button. And if you like this video, why don't you hit the thumbs up button? Okay. So that's it. It doesn't hit my um, Piotrowski F score. The ROIC, I looked at it before, it's not good. Um, the DCF's not good, the old school value action score is not good. Uh, the stock, for me, not a buy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm going to um, trade the stock. Okay, so I'm here on Robinhood and let's go ahead and trade this stock. So we're gonna hit sell. We're gonna type in shares because I only have one share. It's the easiest way to do it. I'm gonna type one share because I only have one share. That's what I was given when I signed up. The price is 4.14, order received. And it's done. So there you go. I just traded my stock, sold it. And as you can see, I got an email from Gmail, Robinhood. Uh, your order has been placed. So that's it. Okay, everyone, thanks so much for watching. That's all we have for today's video. Of course, if you liked it, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button too. And uh, if you don't have a Robinhood account yet, please hit the uh, link below, open an account using my link. That way I'll get a free stock and then maybe I'll do one of these again. Also, uh, please let me know if you enjoyed watching this, uh, if you thought it was valuable and you got some stuff out of it let me know in the comments below. So that's all we have for today. Thanks everyone so much for watching and we will see you next time.